adversity, bring it. The struggle, we welcome it. Snooze on life, never that. We are Dave Regina and Mike Perella, and this is the No Snooze Podcast. Come on. Welcome back to episode 27 of the No Snooze Podcast. Very special episode. We had a new arrival to the squad. Some would say our most important arrival. <laughs> Dave, who, who came and graced us with their presence in so the So the birth of Callie Michelle Regina. She, yes, yes. Much awaited. She, yes, m- much awaited. She has now finally joined us. Um, so this episode will really just, I guess, talk of the birth. Um, we'll get back to all the other stuff in the next episode, but then I'm going to go ahead and say that the following episode will be the birth of little Miss Pirelli. Yes, yeah, so little Miss Pirelli, I'm hoping, and I know, Dana, you're uncomfortable, um, and this will probably come out hopefully before we have the baby. <laughs> it's not that I'm not excited to see her, just a lot to get done, and a couple weeks would be very helpful. So, <laughs> but you're thir- 38 weeks now? 38 weeks, yep. 11 days till the due date. July 1st is the official due date. I'm really hoping for a July 3rd baby on my birthday, uh, very selfishly. And then we get the next day off, which is nice, July 4th. So wow. that's what I'm hoping for. I don't know. I don't think we're going to make it, but yeah, she's doing I, great. I don't either. A little uncomfortable. I'm going with your first, your, your original, you mentioned it on the podcast. You said June 25th. You said, I don't remember just saying say, that. Yeah, you Did said, I? just say the baby comes on June 25th. I'm going to extend that to June 26th. 26th would be a that's Friday. What, that's that what I'm going to go with. I could do another CV, Friday. CV, what's your guess? I could do another what's Friday. What's your guess? 27th. 27th. Okay. Saturday works even better. Good, nice. Saturday is a good day for All right, me. so we got our guesses officially in the books. But the, and you're going to go into the details, but when uh, you guys had the baby, Dana was an emotional wreck of joy. <laughs> yes. And felt like, you know, obviously other friends of hers have had babies, but the way it yep. progressed about almost the same timing, yep. she felt like it was her baby. Yes. So I was very worried she was going to come to the hospital and steal <laughs> Callie. So. And for those who haven't tuned into, I think, episode six, the dynamic, Mike's wife, Dana, my wife, Karina, they've been best friends since fourth grade. Mike and I go back 15 plus years. Um, then they got pregnant literally right around the same time. So it's been a, a whole journey of now 38 and 39 weeks yeah. of, um, you know, a, a new dynamic, I guess. Yeah, we can't let them get together anymore because they, <laughs> they and they, And they planned this out perfectly. I don't know yeah. how they did it, but they always said that they were going to do it and they did it. They're rough. So the shirts finally came in after the, how many months was it for the first um, wave? I don't know. We'll just One go month. with the, the Corona wave. Wow, nice right in the go. corner right pocket. So we're gonna open these up. You guys can see it on mic right now. That was a Wayne Krubeck Br- catch right um, here, right in the pocket. I like it. Wow, so right off the top, I mean, I, look, the feel of it is awesome. Yeah, these are the best quality this, we can get. This is a nice blend here. This is nice. This is a, what size, XL, my size, perfect. All right. No and snooze. No snooze, baby. Um, so yeah, nice. the shirts are in. I know everybody is getting the orders. Yes. Uh, but it's got a nice little give to it, so it's a, it's a little stretchy. Um, the logo is in there with the no snooze. I think that was uh, Mr. Pirelli's design there. That so was I, a group effort. I, I think you did a phenomenal I just made job. A little thicker because we're a little um, thicker as men. That's so right. I was trying to reflect that. <laughs> but awesome, love it. Can't wait to try it on. Um, yeah, I, I hope it fits. I think I gained. Uh, couple pounds in stress you know and currently we are on no-snooze.myshopify.com uh go get your shirts and hoodies we will be rolling out other special items uh in the near future and uh keep an eye out now that they're actually shipping uh, because everything's opening up again so keep an eye out for that like subscribe go to our youtube channel go to instagram go to facebook go support i see the analytics and the majority of you are not subscribed <laughs> and they're not liking. It's me. If you want a good laugh, look at any of our videos. It's me having a conversation with myself <laughs> and me as no snooze saying don't snooze on what I just talked about. So That's I'm going beautiful. crazy because of the lack of subscribers <laughs> and likes. That's all right. It, that's it, my rant. That's good. It, it's good. It, it's a slow grow. We appreciate all the support. A slow grow. Um, right. Slow grow. Slow grow. 
Yeah. Uh, but same thing on Instagram. Uh, but you, you know what we see that that is undeniable is the amount of listens. So we appreciate yes. everybody tuning in. You're right. Um, because some people like myself don't really hit the tube, but we definitely appreciate the all the. Um, <laughs> you, you love my verbiage, right? Yeah, we don't. I don't hit the tube. <laughs> yeah, I don't. I'm, I'm not a big tubey, tubey guy. Uh, but thank you guys very much. Now that we got that out of the way, we've been sitting here for. 20 to 30 minutes yep. and I have not been able to ask questions because I've been holding out. <laughs> Claudio started and we stopped him. So take it away because I cannot wait to bombard you with questions. Yes. So I'll start us, I guess, the night before. So Karina had a, um, it, it's called the Schedule C section. So we knew the exact date that. Which is very Callie, Regina-esque. <laughs> Callie Michelle was going to come. Like, oh, right. it's going to be this time, this day. Yes, exactly. So the night before you can already, you know, imagine we're both like all right this is happening like let's try to get some sleep so we got i think like three hours um we had to get there at 5 30 a.m because my wife had to be tested for covid they didn't test me uh, but greenwich hospital just shout out greenwich hospital very quickly um, dr hirsch was the doctor who delivered the baby but the entire staff was absolutely phenomenal uh, so we thank you greenwich hospital and we know that you're going to take beautiful care of the Pirellis. Tell them Dave sent you. That's said. right. Tell them Dave sent you. I like that, Mike. Um, so, yeah, so it was three hours. Um, then we wake up in the morning, and it's like, all right, we're, we're doing this, I guess. So we put Chance in the car with us. That's our 10-year-old uh, pit bull. He'll be 10 in October, I can't actually. He's 10. Yeah, it's wild. Um, and he was going to meet – well, my brother came to meet us at the hospital at 530 to take the dog so he can take care of him for a couple days. We head in there, they bring us into the room, they give Karina the uh, COVID test. I haven't got the test, but that did not look comfortable by any means. That thing is huge, goes all the way up, and they come out with a blood sample from the brain. Oh. Yeah, so it was, it was very strange. I not, hope they don't test Not them. a good, no, yeah. well, Dana's definitely getting tested. Yeah. Um, but not a good way to, I guess, start the experience. Um, then she, you know, she's connected to the IV. Uh, just to get some fluids in her and they're like all right cool it's six 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 thirty now at this point we're gonna head in at around 8 a.m and what are you doing surgery. during all this i'm just sitting there in a chair off to the side uh we were in one room but then we needed to be um i guess just moved into a couple different rooms because then you had the surgery room then you had the recovery room and then we went off to maternity after we had the baby got it um, i'll try to walk you through the process as quickly as possible no oh, um, i'm enjoying this but <laughs> so when we get there, it's now, yeah, like 6, 6.30ish. She is about an hour and a half away from surgery because we were supposed to be scheduled for 8 a.m. Around 7.15, they come in and they say, we have, we have to bump you guys, we have a medical emergency. And typically what this is, don't know for sure if this was the case, but um, there was another delivery that was happening and they went natural birth, right? And when we actually saw the baby after, beautiful baby, uh, didn't get their names, but God bless you guys. Um, so something happened to where the baby or mom, you know, was under stress and they had to perform an emergency C-section. So that's why they schedule C-sections because those are the ones that are scheduled. They can take their time with them. So they bump us mm -hmm. because at the time, you know, the most important thing is delivering that, that first baby. So then they come in, they're like, yeah, we're getting bumped for like another hour, hour and 15 minutes. So we're like, cool. No problem. Dr. Hirsch comes in. He's like, look, I'm telling you right now, this is how it's going to go. I'm going to go down there. I'm going to cut you open. Uh, it's about a six inch, you know, incision. <laughs> look at, look at his face. Um, My like body gets you're going to have, a, you're going to have a conversation with Dave. I'm like, wait, wait. So she's going to be, she's going to be up this whole time. So we knew that she was going to be awake this entire time, which was strange. She's like, well, doc, can you put me out? And they're like the anesthesiologist. Did she say that? Yes. The anesthesiologist is like, no. That's something I definitely would say. No, we don't. Yeah, we don't want to do that. We want you to remember the birth, but I promise, you know, you're not going to feel anything. Let us know if you do. Right. So get, they do that. So he says, you're teeth. going to have a 10 minute conversation. The baby's going to be out and I'm going to stitch you back up in 30. So sure enough, nine o'clock comes around and they're like, all right, it's go time. So we're like, all right. They take Karina out of the room and this is where she goes and gets her spinal tap. Spinal tap is a version of uh, similar to an epidural, but it's uh, spinal tap. So you can't feel anything. Well, you can't even move your your lower extremities. Not sure what the epidural 
difference is, I'm sure, you know, people out there, but with C-sections, it is a spinal tap versus the epidural. I don't think they bring the husband in for that in case we get a little weak and then they got to pick us up because, you know, then you got two big guys on the floor, yeah. then they have to worry about Just us. getting in the way, stepping over right, someone. Right. Like. So they're like, we'll be right back, Dad, in about 10, 15 they minutes. They Dad yes, during the whole process. 10, 15 minutes for you. When I tell you these 15 minutes, I'm literally sitting there by myself, like, getting ready for a big game. That's what I can, like, relate it to. Like, I'm rocking back and forth, and I'm like, all right, this is happening, this is happening. God, just please, you and know. you're, like, in a medical room? Yeah, by myself. No <laughs> doctor, no nothing. I'm literally talking to myself. And, and what's funny about no snooze is I was applying the no snooze mindset as I was going through this, right? So I was breaking this down. I'm like, look. You can get so overwhelmed right now, but stop worrying about what's going to happen in the next couple minutes. Focus on the now. One foot in front of the other, one minute by one minute. And eventually they came in and they were like, all right, 15 minutes is up. You ready, dad? I say, yeah, yeah, I'm ready. So I get up. The first thing they ask is, do you have your cell phone? I wanted to say no because I'm like, uh, you know, should I you not have my cell phone? Right, yeah. But I had my cell phone in my back pocket. And they're like, do you have your cell phone? I'm like, yeah. They're like, all right, cool. Get it out and, you know, keep it by you. So you walk into this room. Do you have your cell phone? No. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, yeah. I wasn't really not, I'm not prepared. Right. So I, w I walk into this room and it's like lights crazy. The, the temperature was probably five degrees. I don't oh. know if this is where they do, you know. So they, wear your nose through hoodie in. They, yeah, seriously. They keep some bodies or something like that. I don't know. But the, it, it, was, it was like a refrigerator in there. It's an yeah. operating room. Yeah. Right? So I guess I've they never have, been in an operating room conscious. Well, when so I, I tell know. you the lights and the amount of doctors i guess and, and assistants that are there it it was overwhelming i heard they knew that the no snooze guy was coming in to give birth so those people are just like like when michael jordan got pizza delivered <laughs> they the were more just, people the better that's <laughs> they were just they were just subscribers that yeah, were there yeah. they, they were just like oh dressed. i want to meet the guy <laughs> so i go in there karina's now on her on her back but she wasn't really opened up yet Right? So as soon as I sit down, and they're very meticulous, like sit down here with your feet facing this way. Yeah, I need you to tell me where you are, where Karina is, and okay. when you walk so in. So Karina's laying on her back, if you can imagine, on a bed. Got it. They have a sheet basically right below her breast. Okay. All the way up to, I mean, you know. The ceiling? Not the ceiling, but pretty high up to where you have to really look over to see. It's like but when I was up. walking in, she was she was um, sideways, so I could see what they were doing, but they gotcha. hadn't really opened her up yet. Um, so I walk in, they, they rush me there. So I am now by her head. Okay, right, right. side, left side. Uh, I, am on the, I am on her left side. Got it. I'm on her left side, she's facing up. But what's strange is she didn't feel, she felt like, I guess, she was explaining it like somebody was kind of like sitting on her chest, something like that. But the anesthesiologist comes over and, he's, and he was staying by us watching the, um, the heart rate monitors, making sure that everything was, was uh, okay. He was awesome as well. He goes, can you feel that? And she goes, no. He goes, good, because you would absolutely hate me if you were feeling what was going on. So at that point, they, they were cutting her open. Um, and again, six inch incision. The confidence that these nurses, nurses assistants and doctors have in this surgery, this procedure, is incredible. I'm sitting there now, I'm shaking. My man was asking me about my phone. I'm like, yeah, I got my phone. I got my phone. I'm shaking back and forth. The, the, uh, the phone is sitting on the uh, thing. And I'm like, babe, babe, you okay? Hard to communicate though, because you have the masks on right now due to what's going on. But I think at that time, you probably always have masks. Anyway, in that type I of think environment. So, yeah. But very hard to see your wife sitting there. And that's when I kind of, I had this, this weird experience that I've, I've never felt before because I couldn't control any emotions. Helplessness. I, I didn't know what was going on. I must have been a nervous wreck for her. I was trying to be supportive, right? Because I'm imagining what she's going this through. This dude's just, he's just crying on the side. No, 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 not crying, <laughs> not crying yet, but worried that my wife is under distress. Yeah, and yeah, then yeah. you think about the baby. Well, if my wife's temperature, you know, I mean, blood pressure drops and the babies, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. So I'm worried about that. But thank God everything was, was perfect in that aspect. Doc keeps po poking his head up. Like, hey, how you feeling? How you feeling? Has the face shield, right? Blood spatter all over his face. Blood sp and he's like, Karina, how you doing? Dave, you good? I'm like, I'm like, Doc, yeah, I'm good. When you talk about how confident he is, I'm imagining a hibachi chef with like shrimp flying around. Yes. But instead blood, right? <laughs> but instead like, blood. When he said the face mask. I'm telling blood. you, he had blood spatter like, on, his, on his face. This is where it gets good though. They're like, baby's coming in two minutes. Like, all right, cool. 
this one, I, I don't know if she was a nurse, nursing assistant, something, she said, Karina, you're gonna feel pressure, pressure, loud, pressure. Then I just we're, see my- We're outside, can he yell like full, like how loud it was? <laughs> no, no, seriously, it was like this. Pressure, pressure. And I'm like, wait, what do you mean pressure, pressure? Then I see my wife's body, Mike, just shaking like this, shaking, shaking. Come to find out what that is, is they are literally shaking the baby out of the, the body. The the body. So Karina's obviously shaking, doing a, shaking. Yeah, 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 she's doing, yeah, yeah, she's doing a little shimmy, shimmy What's over here. What's that song called? And, and uh, I'm the like, bachata? <laughs> and I'm like, wait, are you okay? Like, is this all right? And this goes on for two minutes, and literally her shoulders are just shaking, shaking, shaking. I'm over here like, whoa, this is this is just bizarre. They they have one doctor specifically, I think for the for the dad to coach him. Right, like, all right, get your phone out, undo your password. I'm like, I don't even know my password. Well, I don't know. I have to take my mask off. <laughs> you had like the easy job. Yeah. He's like, oh, yeah, yeah, seriously. But he's like, okay. you don't want to mess it up because I'm gonna bring the baby to you first. You gotta snap the picture. No videos, please. But just hit the trigger. Landscape it or portrait? Uh, no, I just, I don't even know. It, it was straight up and down. So whatever that is, I was just like, yeah, yeah. It was absurd. Um, so then finally, he was like, 30 seconds, 30 seconds. And he, uh, Dr. Hirsch goes, wow, she has a beautiful head. She has a beautiful head. So finally, one last shake. They all go down, and then they come up, and then you hear, wah, wah, wah. Great. Like, the baby's now out. Do all babies they cry when they get birth? Yeah, well, my baby did. I'll tell you that. I t I'll tell you that. Wake up. That's how you know they're breathing. Listen, so then I'm now, now I'm looking, like, now I'm crazy. And at this point, when we heard, so we heard her cry, I look at Karina. We both didn't even say a word, and we just started bawling had no control of the emotions at all. The only time I can remember when that ever happened to me was when my grandfather died. Because you know, I was trying to like prep, I remember his, his funeral services, um, it, Navy, that whole thing. So when they did the, um, is it a procession? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. When Con they, they, concession? They, <laughs> concession. No. They give you the guide, basically, to, yeah. to his final destination. Um, so that at that point, I remember feeling that, like, oh my God, I wasn't even crying, and then boom, yeah. just this crazy wave of emotions. Right, so then the, the baby comes over, we're looking at her, she's beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Touch uh, mom real quick, and then they're like, dad, come with me. They bring her over to the scale. Get on the Peloton, 30 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> they bring her over to the scale. Baby weighed seven pounds, five ounces when she came That's out. That's number. 19 inches, uh, but then they're like, dad, come here, you gotta cut the cord. So I'm like, cool, awesome. This is the moment I've been waiting this for. This is what I wanna know about. Right? So then you see this long gray sausage looking contraption, which is the umbilical cord, right? And Doc goes, look, this thing is a little squishy, so you gotta, you gotta cut it pretty hard, right? <laughs> so I'm like, all right, no problem. It's like but alien. My, but my hand is like shaking. He's like, all right, you see where my fingers are? Cut right in between here. So you really can't mess it up. How big, like he goes like this? The umbilical cord is huge. No, but when he, his fingers. Oh yeah, his fingers are like here, but then he'll like move you a little bit. And then he's like that, boom. Oh. So then I go quick, right? Cause I wanted to do it hard. Blood splattered on me. Blood just whoosh, on me. Yeah. So you got to be careful to squeeze. I don't know if I Did was on do a, any, I don't know if I, no, I don't know if I was on a <laughs> angle or something weird, but the splatter, maybe went, the, sh the scissors weren't sharp. We'll went, went everywhere. Yeah. Maybe the scissors. All right. Well, we'll yeah. blame it on the medical they scissors. They even trick scissors. Yeah. <laughs> like this big dude for making yeah, fun. But seriously, he was like, look, some guys, they think they're going to hurt the baby. You got to yeah. do it. You got to do it quick. You got to do it quick. Bring my own. So boom, I cut it like super hard, nice clean cut, but the blood splattered all over. Kind of like a blood sausage. If you, if you can imagine how, I've never had a, blood how sausage a sausage is, right? So, so then from there, we, they take the baby for, I don't know, to probably two minutes just to like clean her off, right? And at that point, now I'm getting, now I'm getting a little, um, I, don't, I, I don't know if it was nervous or woozy, but now I'm seeing, I'm trying to like look over the sheet. Right, because now they got to stitch. I thought everything was over, but then I, I forgot they had to, you know, stitch Karina back up. So that process, I'm looking over, and I, th I believe I saw the placenta on the table. Right, that's the that's the big sack that's in there. Um, I'm doing I, one of these. I, yeah, but it was just it was a lot of red going on. But again, the confidence of these doctors is unbelievable. Because now at this point, I'm just like, all right, my hands are, you know, it, it, it's God and the doctors. That's it, like it's on them. But the entire process, it, it's just like they've, they've done this million, and I'm sure they've done it thousands and thousands of times. Um, but it's just a, another example of how even 
doctors in their profession, are, they're like professional athletes, right? Because they're just doing the same things over and over and over again. It's wild because like a, a, um, a coach sees like some of his guys in the NBA and he's like, I'm, I'm responsible for all these guys. Yes. Like, so, like oh, yeah. doctor walks across town. He's like, I birthed all these people. Yeah, I'm responsible for every single one of these yeah. people. <laughs> that is true. It's, it's exactly like that. So the baby's out. They take the baby somewhere else. Uh, yeah, well, they, they wash her off quick. Um, then they, they let, you know, mom and I hold the baby. Um, now we're waiting about 25 minutes for her to get stitched back up. And where are you during this? Still there? Right next to her. Yep. Right, right next to her. Um, they, but they bring the baby back in. Now I'm holding the baby, not really knowing kind of what I'm, what I'm doing. You're like multitasking but, but with yeah, the baby. They, the way that they also handle the baby shows you how resilient babies really are. Um, I, I remember that at first I was like petting her with like two fingers because I didn't know how to like you pet got her. Monstrous right? hands. But the ba- Lenny the, the, from the, and then the way the here. way they started like going back and forth with her and her legs are dangling, and then it just gave me some confidence. Like, all right, dude, stop, stop being like that. Yeah. What so a, what a father. So then we go we go up to recovery, which is a separate room, um, and this is where we, it was a little nerve wracking, but I felt terrible because the people that I told you about who delivered right before us, they were in there. Their baby is nice and quiet, hanging out. Callie comes in and she's bugging out, like crying so loud and there's nothing you can do about it. And I'm like, I, I don't really know what, what to do here. Callie's blood sugar was low when she came out. It was 31, it was supposed to be 40. And then at four hours of life, that number goes to 45. So they were a little bit worried about it. So they took this gel, they put gel on her um, and then they had to give her formula right away. And we're now, we're planning to uh, breastfeed as well, but she's, she's now pumping instead of actual breastfeeding. Uh, but it kind of took a little bit of the stress off because I know Karina was worried about that too. Like, oh, I got to be breastfeeding, you know, throughout this whole process, which she still is doing, uh, but it's now supplemented by formula. But formula, I guess, spikes that that number back up. So she shot all the way up to 80. They monitored it for about two hours and then it leveled off at like 60, which was, you know, where she was supposed to be. But the first thing you hear is you that your baby's a pre-workout. Blood, blood sugar was low. I'm like, oh my God, what does yeah. this mean? Yeah. You know, so we were a little nervous, uh, but she came out absolutely. Because you weren't giving Karina anything with sugar in it. You were cooking <laughs> yeah. all these perfect meals. Right. She came out absolutely perfect, um, beautiful baby girl. Looks just like you. Uh, yes, my, my twin, actually. The, yeah. When you look at the it's baby weird. pictures from... No from, beard, but... N- yes, uh, thank God, no beard. But babies do have a little odd fur on them when they come out. They have really? Like, yeah, they have like... Um, they have like a peach fuzz. Peach fuzz. Yeah. yeah, but like all over them, and then it kind of falls, falls off, so it's strange. Uh-huh. So in recovery for about like two to three hours, then we get wheeled over to maternity, where then you stay for the next couple days. And in maternity, those nurses, they are incredible. Just so helpful. Everybody's willing to bend over backwards for you. Um, one lady, she, was, she, she got a little mad at me. I forget what I said. Um, but that was the only time that I embarrassed my wife. was was one time. Gotta, so you, so not, not terrible. You got to tell me who that is so I can ask her about it. Right. I'll do an interview. <laughs> yeah, but do you not, remember the big guy with the beard? I, yeah. I, I thought it was a win because it was only one nurse that was, you know, had to put me in my place. So my wife was embarrassed at that one moment. Other than that, though. That's pretty good, though, because you were there right, for... Right, that's what I'm saying. Uh, but then from there, now the, you know, now it kind of kicks in. So now they, obviously, you're with the baby the entire time. Um, trying to think of, of like, the first, the very first day when we were in there. They, the husbands, by the way, prepare for this. You're not leaving the room for two days you're there or three days, not even in the hallways. They let the mother walk around the hall, I guess, just to you know recover or something like that. But you're not leaving the room, so mentally prepare for that. Yeah. What did you bring into the room? So we brought we bought clothes, snacks, um, exercise band. Did you? Um, yeah, just one, um, which I didn't really get to. I only got got one 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 little uh, uh, day of of little buys in uh, I shoulders. I thought in. you were going to roll the Peloton in. I, I really wanted to did. I wanted to bring really the Peloton did. in. I really did. I thought I thought it would have been a, a it's nice probably not good though. Nice you're like sweating all over this, especially the way you sweat. Yeah, it's 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 a little strange. Um, but I could tell you from that point seeing my wife with the baby, something just kicks in where yeah. they become like, okay, I'm a mom now 
And then they get all these like skills that they like never had. Like they just have this confidence and they know how to handle the baby. Like and meanwhile, mean penny vodka or something like that? <laughs> <laughs> penny vodka. Where the dad, you know, we're kind of like just, all right, yeah. I, I guess I'm nervous, you know, to hold the baby. Uh, but you quickly get over that. Um, once you find a nice little position. But you look like a natural with the baby. Now, I mean, I guess. They I, got those motherly instincts, though, that just, you're right. They yeah, kind of kick it, in. But it kicks in something, something different, though, yeah. seriously. Um, and, and to see her start the recovery process, but so, so resilient in, you know, I want to do whatever is best for the baby. I just want to. Selflessness. Yes. It, it, it's, it's, that's a good, word, a good way, to, way to explain it. Thank you. Uh, but yes, yeah, so selfless, willing to, to do whatever. Not that I'm not, but she physically just went through this, yeah. you know, massive surgery per se, um, and, and now it, it's kicked into another level. But I can see how exhausting it is to then be now breastfeeding and doing all this on top of what they're going through. Yeah. You guys are gonna have a much different experience because it's not a scheduled C-section, um, but just know you're in phenomenal hands. Yeah. Right, in Greenwich Hospital. I'm most curious, and I know Dana, and I don't want to ruin the whole trajectory of the story, but we're very curious as the for the meal, because the meal there's so much hype around the oh yeah lobster and steak. Yes, yes. So you you definitely get good food. They have great food. Um, food service guy. His name is Calvin. Phenomenal. Tell him Dave sent you. Okay, I will. all right. I will. Because he, he's he's a very Does good. Does he guy. like you or you, is he like the nurse? And I'm you, like, you might have to show him a picture in. for him to you know remember. You. Yeah, but I was I was the guy with his shirt off the whole time. Yeah, we used to um, we would Facetime and he would have his shirt off, and I'm well, like, because it's put his shirt on because you do skin to skin with the baby. So I was just finding that as an excuse to keep my he's shirt completely off completely naked the whole time. <laughs> you know. Yeah. Um, but I can tell you when I got initiated to becoming a father, it was about hour twenty five. Initiated. No, seriously, about hour twenty five. Oh, first. First night of sleep. Let's go there. Yes, I want to hear the no first, sleep. First night of sleep. Non-existent. And not because of the baby either. It's because of the nurses and the professionals and yeah. the doctors that are coming in every 45 minutes to one hour. Are you a light sleeper or you just woke up? I am a light nervous? sleeper, but I mean, I have the baby right next to me. In a, she's in a, um, a, and you're curious, a bassinet, but wheeling. Yeah, but anytime they come in, they knock on the door. Mind you, the cot, uh, again. Greenwich Hospital, phenomenal. Cots, not so. Well, they're phenomenal. not built for you. <laughs> not so phenomenal. They got wood, uh, you know, wood on the ankles where you, because you're, you know, you're kind of tall. Might have to bring in something. Yeah, so you got to, you'll, you'll build a contraption, but you put pillows over it to yep. make it a little bit better. Uh, but yeah, you're sleeping on that thing, so it's already uncomfortable. Waking up every 45 minutes to one hour, so you're never getting any sleep. Yeah. And then as soon as you think you're about to fall asleep, knock, knock, knock. But understandable, they have to check. Uh, the incision, they check on the baby, the vitals for mom. Maybe a dumb question. So were you both up the whole night? The whole night. In theory, if one were a heavy sleeper asking for a friend <laughs> and slept, could she would be up anyway, right? Yeah, she would be up, but I don't know how you can sleep. Can you sleep through like beeping I, machines? I sleep through everything. Really? Yes. See, I, I can't. So I'm a light sleeper <laughs> as it is, but beeping machines, like then, yeah, I then sleep through it all. you start thinking, oh my God, is that the baby? That's you, true. You know, but then yeah. as soon as you look up, you see another nurse, but then you're like, weren't you just here? <laughs> I'll probably be up the whole and time. And they have a, they, and I'm sure this is just practice in general in every hospital. So many doctors, one for lactation, one for, you know, the vitals, one to, to clean up, you know, the incision. Um, then you have the actual doctors coming and checking. It was probably 10 doctors throughout the night. So that first night, now stacked on top of three hours the night before, yeah. I can see how parents fall into this trap of like never catching up on sleep because from there it's, it's just tough, right? So then the next day, um, oh, now that'll take you into hour like 25 when I got initiated. So Karina- So it's the next day. Yes, but now Karina's knocked out on pain meds. She's finally like getting some sleep. Callie starts crying. I'm like, shh, Callie, shh, mom's sleeping. I'm in no, charge, you yeah, can't do this I, to I, me. You can't do this to me, don't do this, don't do this. So I check her diaper, it's clean. I'm like, oh, cool. Here's a little tip. When they have their legs crossed like that, hold it up in the air, right? Because you don't want them to put their feet in their own soil. Soil, nice, right? well said. Right. There was no soil there. As soon as I lifted her legs up, and I wanted to give her a wipe anyway, and always uh. with, with girls, here's a little tip too. You go front to back because you never want to take soil from the back and bring it to the front. Soil, yeah. Any, any bacteria, right? So I'm giving her a nice, a nice little wipe, and poof, she explodes on me. <laughs> she soiled all over me, like both now. Now she pooped on me, right? And then I'm like trying to block it, 
Then I go to wipe her again, must have touched something else. She started peeing on me. And I'm like, stop, whoa, 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 Try, trying to like figure this out. Mom is over there knocked what out. What time is this? This was... You don't even know. I no, know. I mean, it was nine o'clock. This was, this was in the morning. Oh, um, tough way to start or, the very, day. Very early though. Yeah. Like, so, it, well, maybe it was an hour 25 then because it wasn't even a full 24 hours because it was early, early morning, but yeah. still dark outside. Yeah. But mom was out. knocked out. So this was our moment. Um, and she since then has done that to me three times now. Um, but now I'm, I'm on it. Like as soon as I know, psh, and I just, I block it with a wipe. Yeah, you have, and you have huge hands. Yeah, so, so like, I'm good. These, these hands are soil proof now. Yeah, that's, uh, but definitely, she's got a hell of a target too. But imagine, the because th there's no, I mean, I'm sure they can teach you, I guess, you know, how to wipe your child. I'm pretty sure, yeah. I'm sure, but you, you then have to like ask. That wasn't a time that I asked, so yeah. I was stuck just kind of figuring it out um, and not having mom to, yeah. you know, had she changed the perfect. diaper prior yeah, to that? Oh, oh yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. So um, I've never changed a diaper But the first, the first 24 hours, though, no, I lied. She was not able to do anything. So that's where you come in, and you have to do everything. Right. No, but everything. That's right. Let's do it. Let's do it. <laughs> it might be backwards, but Everything be from getting her, you know, her pen to create the new chart that I'll tell you about, because we have charts. You know, the Regina's are very charted over here. Color coordinated? So, yeah, so um, anything like, like, oh, babe, can you get this? Babe, can you get me this? And then the nurses, too, they, they're doing their thing to help you out. Anything you need, they'll, they'll bring you. Um, but you have to do everything for the baby, too, because mom can't really, well, at that time, Karina was ordered to stay in bed for the first 24 because of the incision. You guys might be a little bit different in terms of that, but prepare for that. Yeah. If you prepare for the worst night of sleep, because we knew that we were not going to get any sleep. It was worse than that, than the preparation, but it helped a lot being already prepared in a mental... Knowing uh, that. Yes, going in that way versus like, oh yeah, well, you know, maybe we'll get some sleep. No, just plan on no sleep. Yeah. Right? So that was that. Was that. Um, then after the first full day, Karina was able to get up for the first time. So that's when she then started to help change diapers, uh, but natural pro. Like, I mean, but One at this hand. point, 24 hours in, I'm already 10 diaper changes deep, right? So now I'm a pro. Who's the better diaper changer at this moment? At this moment? Eh, I think she is still. Wow. Yeah. But they, they Never admit that. also the umbilical cord, it has a weird plastic piece on it. Have you seen it? No, no, I haven't seen anything. <laughs> I've been I avoiding know everything. So when they when they cut the cord, they put this like plastic piece to hold, I guess, it in place that eventually falls off three weeks, two to three weeks later. Wait, what? Yes, and it's on the umbilical. How much cord. of a sausage is on the end of the belly? <laughs> no, it's a, it's probably that big. Yeah, but it's not. That's no, like no. a breakfast. Length. No, imagine your belly button. Yeah. With a piece of plastic sticking out of it, right? And the sausage is in there. And the sausage is in there. Yeah, in that's the plastic. Wild. So that's there. So you don't want to take the diaper and put it over that. So you have to fold it, crease it nice to make sure that that doesn't really touch the, the baby. That's something you're definitely going to have to All do right, for we'll sure. Figure that out. <laughs> figure that out too. Play this episode when you're going in. CV, just have the audio did I have ready. A, for him. Did I talk on here about how I my only question for the doctor? Did I talk about that when Dana? Because I can't go into the appointments. Yeah. So Dana goes, let me know if you have any questions. I'll ask the doctor. So my one question was, does it matter where I cut the umbilical cord if it's an innie or an outie belly button? Like if I cut <laughs> That's a good one. What do, you, right? what, what do they say? Dana didn't ask. Uh, she said, I can't ask that. And I'm like, you asked me what I want to know. No, That's so, what I want to know. But it seems like they clamp it. They put... So it's where they clamp it. Well, do you have an innie or an outie? I have an innie. I have an innie too. I have an innie. My wife has an innie too. Innie? Innie, yeah. Innie? <laughs> He's, outie, wow. <laughs> asking around. Um, so, so yeah, th if you're aware of that, that you'll then never, you'll never forget that piece. Okay. Um, so now the, the so food, we'll, we'll get to the food, right? Yes, yes. Uh, they give you, they give you three great meals. I mean, even the regular. This is an unbelievable recap, by the way. I'm really enjoying they, it. I feel like I'm there. This they, is good. They give you three like meals a, a day. You have your breakfast, lunch, dinner. I heard that if you ask for a you know a snack box, they give you that too. Is that what you got? Yeah, they, they have that. They have peanut butter and jelly. Like, excuse me, ready do you for have you too. Any, uh, overnight oats and blueberries. <laughs> yeah. Like he was well, giving them their. The one actual... thing I really struggled with. Did you watch my video of the five ingredients? Can you <laughs> was, make that? The, was my water intake, because I, <laughs> I had to hit the sink because the amount of water that the nurses were bringing in was really for my wife. So and you were drinking it. I was drinking it at first, and then she's like, "Babe, where's the water?" I'm like. 
Hold on, sorry. <laughs> Nurse, please refill. They brought double what they were bringing in. How many, just like, to make were they sure. bringing the little? Little pitchers, yeah, little pitchers. But then I just hit the sink. Yeah. Um, but I brought our great no snooze water bottle. Do you bottle. have a filter on your thing? Or no, you drink? I'm I'm a dirty. I go guy, straight man. from the sink. I'm yeah. a dirty guy. Yeah. I just, oh no, I don't. I'm I lying. go I go straight from the sink or the uh, fridge. The fridge. Yeah. Well, yeah the I fridge is filtered. Fridge. Um, but I was doing bathroom Greenwich Hospital water. It's, Garden hose. It's great. Incredible. If you ever oh, done it, it on a hot day, it's the best. <laughs> it definitely is good. Get that. You get that metallic taste from the, uh, yes. the end of the hose. Yep. Amazing. Perfect. Yeah, yeah, it's perfect. But it's the best. That's true. Uh, so yeah, the meals are the meals are good, but then on the, what you're talking about is the celebratory meal. Yes. Right. So now, incredibly, we were only in there for two days, and on day three, they gave Karina the go ahead to say, "Look, if you want to leave, you can leave." Um, she was now up and moving. I think her my remember how I was being critical of how much she was working out. Yeah. I think that helped the whole process. Like, I think her, her insides, like, kind of bounced back very quickly um, because everything that they were looking for, it was happening. It was, it was really happening. There was one strange thing that happened um, after... A baby came out of her body at some point. No, no, but this, this freaked me out because after 24 hours, there was this air... If you can imagine, like, an air bubble. So her, her stomach, like, basically went back... Defl deflated. Yeah, it, like, deflated. I mean, you saw her. She looks great. After 24 hours, there was a, like oval shape, like air pocket right there. So when they lifted it up, I, I said, nurse, what is that? And Karina was like, what, what? I'm like, no, no, it looks great. It looks great. I just, uh, what is that? So then the nurse was feeling it. She's like, I don't know. You know, I, I think I have to go get the doctor. So they go get the doctor. Doctor comes back and thank God she was like, no, that happens all the time. But one of the nurses, she was like, you know, sometimes they separate their abdomen from the so we got nervous that that's what it was. Um, but it was just like an air pocket pretty much. They come in and they push, push, push like really hard on the stomach after they get the surgery. And this happens a couple times, I guess, to Reese. prevent prevent blood clotting, probably yeah. um, to get all the juices flowing again. Um, but it, it's a wild scene to watch, man. And, and the the amount of pain, I guess, um, that women are able to tolerate. Yeah, it's not even close. No, you can't even, you can't even imagine. I was sick in my own, just thinking about how she was feeling. And I don't mind gory stuff. I don't mind seeing it. But thinking that she was feeling something, I was, it was bugging me out. That's a big fear of mine is like we go into the hospital and then the doctor has one of those machines that replicates it. And they're like, do you want to try it? And then it's like, you have to. Like, I'm about to do it and I like, have to do <laughs> and it. And you have to do it? Yeah. No, I, it, it, I'm sure it's extreme. But again, uh, scheduled C-section, Karina was fortunate because she didn't, she didn't feel any labor pains. She didn't feel um, the contractions because this happened before. Early enough. Um, but, you know, pretty in invasive surgery that goes on and they're moving your organs around to make sure that the baby's coming out. Oh my God. Um, but, th but that was that, man. I mean, it was, it was the most incredible feeling in the world. And I was trying to find a way to articulate the feeling of when you actually see your child. And this was the best that I can come up with. All right. If you know what it felt like to date Dana or even a crush of yours back in like eighth or ninth grade, you get these crazy like butterflies. Let's stick with Dana. <laughs> Let's stick with Dana. But you get these butterflies in your stomach, right? Yeah. You felt butterflies before. Imagine that feeling now times. It's like adrenaline. A, I mean, a billion with the nerves that are happening to make sure you know that everything is going smooth and then that feeling never goes away so when you when i'm now away from my daughter right now right thinking about her i get that feeling of the butterflies but then when you're near her just knowing that she's okay right around her kind of simmers down a little bit you okay. you you get like a little relief ease. yes you, you're you're almost at ease but there's this constant like worry of like all right what is she doing right now you know is she all right I've been, I've been up, I just like literally, she makes a noise and I just watch her breathe. Are you a warrior? Uh, like, are you naturally a warrior before no. the child? No. No. And I wouldn't even really say that I'm worried, like, because I know she's in good hands. That's not what yeah. I'm worried about. How's your water still full? Because I was drinking the uh, um, I was going to say, I've been drinking my, I'm empty. And no. Then... But knowing that. I need to get one of those. This child, this is what I put in my head. Yeah basically relies on you for life. Yeah. Like if you don't feed that child, obviously my wife is there, but if, if 
we don't feed that child, baby's gone. Well, you created that child too. No, no, which but is but wild. this is the first thing. And you know, obviously, dogs. But your dog is still different. Like a human being is relying on you to live. The big difference too, and this is very simplistic. Like the fact that these things, people, kids, ch children, babies, are going to talk to you one day is a wild thought. Yes. Because like a dog's never going to talk to you, at least in our lifetime probably. Yes. So like the fact that you could be screwing up a ton, but they can't tell you you're screwing up gives you a little leeway. Yep. You know? Um, and that, so, so we go home and thank God, knock on wood, Callie is not really a crazy crier like that. Uh, she fusses. She, she gets a little antsy. But she makes like these little bird chirping noises that are super cute, <laughs> I swear. It's either a bird or a cat, can't really figure it out. Um, but she's been sleeping, she, we, we've been on a schedule, we feed her every three hours. If we can stretch it to three and a half, sometimes we do. Um, but you should see this chart that we created in our notes. And it has every single thing uh, of when she ate. But you need that because yeah, the doctor needs to see that at your first yep. appointment. Yeah. Um, they have so, apps and stuff for that too, though, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm sure. Yeah, we just like to to physically Do it your way. physically yeah, listen, write it down. You know? Highlighters, right? Colors, all that. Uh, but it, it's important to keep track of of not only the last one, but knowing for the day how much they actually um, consumed. Ate. Yes. So it, it, it's every day. I mean, I'm learning obviously more and more and more. Sleep schedule is still not good because you're, it's still broken sleep. I've all asked night. everyone who's recently had a baby this question: Is it easier or harder as far as the lack of sleep? So you remember when I told you that I was prepared? Yeah, yeah. We have recorded forever right. how well prepared we both are. I was perfectly prepared. Oh, honestly, because I. The You're going to get so much hate mail the, just for that one clip. No, but I'm, but I'm telling you, because the picture that I drew up in my head was so terrible in terms of the sleep. The sleep. Like, I didn't do it with the first night of the hospital. That's where I was humbled. Because the hum it was that just every was, hour. That was every, Mike, I'm telling you, 45 minutes, yeah. no more. And then as soon as you would fall asleep, you're woken up. Yeah. So I basically did not prepare for that moment, mm -hmm. but I was anticipating that type of scenario for the nighttime. So now I am so, I, I'm just... We're both. We try to do everything together, right? But one of us takes the lead on each change and uh, feeding. Yeah. So, and how do you guys break up the night schedule? So the night schedule, she's also pumping. So that means instead of her, you know, being What's on the actual breast, she is pumping into this machine, which is a crazy contraption. Crazy Pretty awesome. Crazy contraption. Um, but now she's producing milk, so we're doing the breast milk with the formula. But Karina basically has to wake up and pump while I'm changing. I do the late one. I do the 3 a.m. Um, we both wake up for the 11 o'clock or the 12 o'clock, uh, but she's been doing that one. In the, at night? Yeah, at night. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, so we've been going to bed, honestly, I mean, the past couple of days at like 9 o'clock, sleeping until 11, waking up. Sleeping to you know two or three, waking up, sleeping to five, six. And you both six. get up every time. Yeah, we're both up. But I I also feel this responsibility because of the incision. Mm. You know, so I don't want to make her get up, get up. She does it on her own, which is cool. But I just plan to do everything already. So the fact that I was mentally prepared for that, it it's no different. So then when she does take it. Um, it, it's, it's easier You're shooting me. me in the foot big time right now. Why? I was hoping you were like, I don't get up at all. <laughs> no, <laughs> no I'm, I'm, I don't know. I'm good with little Look, sleep. So I, when I went to the doctor, right, we had our first appointment that was yesterday. Uh, the day after you come home from the hospital, you go to the doctor. The doctor, we walk in and they're like, all right, the baby's perfect. Like everything is good with the baby. But this appointment is really for you guys. And we're like, what do you mean? And she's like. Curveball. You have, yeah. She's like, you don't have questions. You don't, nothing. And she said she could see the way that I was involved with the baby. Whereas at that point, certain dads are very scared, right? Because that that's a typical feeling. Yeah. Of course, of course. Um, but she said the thing that I will tell you both that you need to keep, and it's the most important thing. She said, I can tell that your energy is right into the baby. So you guys are meshing so well together as a team right now. And that's where a lot of couples go wrong because it's so stressful and you handle it basically like, all right, I'll get this one, I'll get this one, I'll Divide get this one. Divide and conquer. Right. Which is a, a technique for sure. But she said your energy and you being so relaxed, 
She's like, look at the baby. That's how the baby is. When parents come in here and they're tense and they're trying to, we're all trying to figure it out. But when you're trying to, I guess, I don't know. When, when all your energy is not together, that's when she sees a lot of stress. Mm. And then stress, you know, that just is, is tough for the baby. Yeah. Um, and not that this isn't stressful because not sleeping is very stressful and it sucks. Oh. But, well, let's but start it is, a brand around it and call it no sleep. <laughs> yeah, but it is what it is. Um, and, and honestly, like, I'm not worried about waking up and getting on the Peloton at 5 a.m. Like, I knew, okay, I got to feed my daughter at 3, got up at 6 when she got up, boom, then I can work out whenever that happens. Do you feel anything, like, not... I don't know what the right word is. Do you feel any, not guilt, but like, do you miss the old schedule at all? Or there's just this new thing, you know, that you're so in love with the baby that it's like, that's just, you so, prepared for this. Well, switch. yes, you're so in love with the baby for yeah. sure. But, but do you but miss your old routine? I don't remember it. That's how quickly wow. you're humbled. Yeah. Because it's such a change yeah. in your day to day. And you're forced to just adapt it, adopt and it right there's away. There's no option. Yeah. Like your option is literally sit there and let your wife, I guess, maybe do everything. It's pretty or, wild. It, no, it's, it, it's really wild. It's pretty but wild. But how, for me, I need to be involved in it. They told, they, the doctor said, hey, mom, make sure you do 60 minutes of skin to skin. I do 60 minutes of skin to skin. <laughs> you better be careful. I'm telling you. I don't know if that's I'm telling skins, you. I don't know if I'm that's skins what you. the doctor's prescribing. <laughs> I'm telling you. Just because I want to be as close to my daughter as possible. Yeah, yeah. Um, but one thing that Karina is much better at than I am is soothing the baby. Like when she does. Stop it. <laughs> when she does. <laughs> Stop it. What do we say? <laughs> this is not on the schedule. Turn, turn it off. This, this is yeah. not on the schedule. But so I try. And push ups. Um, and we have a system. And I think this is the universal system so it's not us by any means but when the baby cries first thing you do is we take her out of of where she is we unswaddle her okay. right unswaddle her but we need to wake her up too because her feeding on the bottle gives her this is our approach so i don't know you know listen i'm still learning her feeding on the bottle and sleeping makes it almost seem to her that like okay, I'm comfortable when that's in my mouth, so I should be sleeping. We want her up as much as possible on the bottle. During eating? Yes. I didn't know you could sleep handy. What? Oh, what? They, they, they get milk drunk. They're, they're literally just passed out, right? So you got to, we, we unswaddle her. I guess I have We actually change her to make sure she's got a clean diaper, but yeah. that whole process wakes her up and she starts fussing. Right. And everything is just one thing at a time, though. So while she's fussing, you focus on changing the uh, no, you focus on unswaddling. She's fussing, fussing, fussing. Make sure you take the clothes off. This is what what's going through my head. After that, change the diaper. Then I get her in a comfortable position, put a nice little blanket on, feed her. Right. And that usually is the process that we that we go through. What's the whole thing about letting the baby cry? What is, at what stage is that? What so, is that called? What is that system? Uh, it's from Meet the Fockers, that movie. I've never seen that. Where he's like, whatever you do, Fokker, do not get that baby if he's crying. He like grabs the baby and he's like, I couldn't, I couldn't. Not and a then movie the baby guy. learns You've like seen that words. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, I don't, yeah, I don't yeah. know. But it, there's some term to it. I don't know what it's called. Um, but we yeah, tried so, to do that with Petey. It didn't work. So what we... <laughs> Our dog. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> Petey was crying got, hey, just, second night, and sleep. I was like, Dan and I looked at each other, we were like, I can't do this. It's not worth it. Come on, Pete, get in bed. Mm -hmm. Sleep with us now. Every night, he gets in the way. We have a king-size bed, and I sleep on a fourth of a twin is basically where I sleep. Yeah, that, that's tough. But, but I sleep like so a mummy bass, now because I'm for, so exhausted for, from getting up at 5 a.m. every day. For the bassinet, the bassinet <laughs> is, is next to me on my side. But you are you on, on the right side or left side? I'm on the I'm on the right side. All right, that's my side. Yeah. So the bassinet is there. Um, technically, I can grab her, but you don't want to grab the baby and fall asleep. Yeah, that's what I'm. I'm terrified. No, no, no. So there's horror I'm terrified stories. Of that. Like uh, the, the nurse was telling us that they actually just had a, a patient in there um, who had a. Don't tell me. This. No, no, no. But well, you, I want to. No, know. really, suffocated oh. the baby while they fell asleep because the ba babies are, they're infant i mean you're talking yeah. days old right yeah. so if you just press them to your your shirt or even your your breast and they can't breathe and their nose and their mouth is closed you could suffocate the baby right so you need to make sure that you're sitting up i make sure i get up physically get up and i go sit where i read my 10 pages a day i sit in that corner right you know that that little brown yeah, chair that i have nook. Yeah, yeah exactly the baby I, nook. I have to get up i put the Callie's light on corner if you will right and Callie's kitchen, we can do a whole, whole thing on her. Um, but I have to do that because I'm petrified of yeah. ever. Well, I have night terrors. 
So I'm horrified of like I don't think I, I don't think the first I'm, couple days I've broken TVs in my sleep. I, I, I don't like, think the first couple days you're ever going to get into a deep enough sleep to even have a night terror. Prepare for that. I promise you. OK, that's uh, good. That seriously, I'm, I'm serious. Yeah. Um, and you said the, the crying technique, right? So I think at a certain point you can be as tough as you want. Right. That's your, up to you yeah. as, as a parent. But you also I don't want to hear that. Right. <laughs> like if I'm trying to go to sleep. I want to soothe my baby, make sure she's quiet. So you try That's things, true. right? But in my opinion, she's too young to implement anything right now. So when she's crying, I want her to be soothed. Whereas you, I would take when you she's, the opposite. Dude, I'm not a savage. I'm not going to just let. Listen. I'm not going to leave my. We sh- have 26 other episodes. We can go. <laughs> I more am more not wine going to All allow. All of a sudden, he's a father and he's soft. I'm, I'm not going to allow my one day well, old daughter. To sit, no, to, no, that's not what I'm saying. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, yeah. I, I can't do that. Um, but at a certain point, though, like when she's in the crib, yeah. right, in, a, in the crib, she's not in the crib yet. When she's in the crib and she's crying and you know that she's just crying because she wants something, then that's different. Oh, so you can, te- yeah, that's a good point. You kind of, you feel out when it's appropriate. Yeah, yeah I think Is the Chance first couple back weeks. back home yet? So Chance is home now. They're doing great. Great? Yes. They're doing great, which was awesome. I'll tell you this, what I did. I, I even had my brother take a video. So Matt, I, sh- I think I showed you, yeah, right? Yeah, you did, but. So Matt, um, my brother, he took the baby. If I, I mean, I'm sorry, took, took chance. They can first, run an uncle of the year already. Right, wow. The first baby um, to his house. And what Matt did was he came to the hospital and met me. So I gave him the blanket and a onesie that she was wearing. And then Matt breastfed. <laughs> Matt breastfed Chance. Uh, so Matt then laid that down on Chance's bed. He smelled it, smelled it, smelled it, got the scent of that. Um, so we left that for another two days and then brought him home, and he's been great. The, the dogs have to be able to uh, get the scent of the baby while the baby's still in the belly, I'm right? sure. I, it has to happen because sure. it's... Yeah, and what I did was I made sure throughout the whole pregnancy, and Chance was terrible with this because he's just so jealous. Every, anytime I even kiss mom and I'm like I love you I love you and I do it loud now to make him jealous because it's funny what he does he comes and he rams his head into me and he starts crying Um, but I was always rubbing her belly and saying Callie's coming Callie's coming Callie's coming and he knows the name Callie because he he looks around but he hasn't obviously met her until today Um, but all is well. Yeah, my Petey's, phone hasn't rang, so yeah. Well, so Petey's so we're good. Petey's been licking. Um, Petey's been licking Dana's belly, but part of, part of he doesn't know if it's just like the scent or it's the ice cream that she spilled on the belly. Or oh like, my god! Like you never know why. He... No, because we've hit the ice cream yeah. a lot lately. I believe they they know uh, for sure, especially when <laughs> Petey is so close in the bed too. Well, so, that's the weird thing he does now too, is because like I walk him in the mornings after you know my thousand push-ups no big deal (laughs) (laughs) i can't feel my arms it's hard doing this uh and usually i walk him at seven we hang out and we like play with his toy and stuff now he eats his food i'm dead to him he runs upstairs and gets under the covers right next to her belly yes so i'm like he has to know that's a good thing but now i'm curious to know your spacing like how are you going to keep the baby we were trying to figure it out we were like so we got him a bed so we want to try to get him his own area, which is a little late to do us now. <laughs> but a, little, a bed in our bedroom so yep. he could still be there. But we think he's going to get irritated with her crying. Of course. The first and couple days. naturally, sure. he's just going to kind of anyway. Yeah. But we need to give him a space where he can do yeah. it. So we're figuring out. He sleeps under the bed sometimes, too. Because That's good. Because he doesn't like the light from the TV. So he'll sleep. He'll sleep and then the once bed. we turn off, he'll come back See, up. See, we, we got lucky. Well, we, we crate trained yeah, chance you guys did everything right, the right way right from the start no 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 we did the wrong but no 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 but that was tough because it's the same, worst. same type of thing they start crying yeah. crying crying <laughs> but now i keep i mean you see what we have we have a big crate in the bedroom yeah. we keep the door open all the time remember he chewed he, the- he chooses uh, he, he chooses to sleep in there what did you chew? No, no, I say you chewed the door. Remember the oh, door frame when we came home? That, that was, was the first episode. That was terrible. That was bad. That was so bad. I felt bad for him. Yeah, so now, I mean, now we got to tell the, yeah, the, uh, I mean, the we, audience. We heard but noise. There was one. So Chance has these, these claws, and you could hear, what do you call him? Freddy, Freddy, Freddy Krueger. Krueger. Um, so you hear him, it's like. I've what? seen it, but. Yeah. No, I Yeah, I what's, what's the movie is it from? 50 bucks. Freddy, Freddy Krueger. How do you get it? To you. <laughs> is that right? No. No? No. Oh. Friday the 13th. 25. I knew that. I knew yeah. that. Uh, <laughs> I knew that. That was my that. second. Uh, that was my. S- no, Scream was the next guess, and then 
And then that one. Side note, and I want to put this recorded so hopefully people hold it to us. I saw a segment on another show where people find pictures of lookalikes, and <laughs> I did like a quick search on lookalikes of you. It's a blast. Oh, no. So we got to do a segment in the future, but go ahead. Oh, God. I don't know why I just so thought of that. So we were recording probably, what, three, four months ago at the yeah. house, and Chance usually sits down there with us, but this day his, his claws were so loud on the wood floor that we didn't want to hear the background noise. So we put him upstairs, and I closed the door. He always has gates in front of him, and he's petrified of gates. When he was a baby, literally eight weeks, we had this gate, so he's just, he doesn't go near the gate. I made the mistake of closing the door. Somehow, he thought that he must have been trapped in there for dear life because my man started chewing the molding yeah. of the door. I flew upstairs because I heard him chewing something, and Chance doesn't chew anything, yeah. ever. He'd never done that, uh, but I guess he felt so confined and that maybe he thought you guys were beating me up or something. Yeah, that's I'll go. With, I'll go with that. That's what I thought. I'll go with that. C clearly. But he was trying to chew his way out of the room, which was ridiculous, and I, I, I might have spanked him. Yeah. I, I might have spanked him. That's a different <laughs> episode of <talk laughs> parenting. I, I, might, I might have spanked him. <laughs> um, but no, other than that, I mean, he, he's, he's the best. So, so the, the two babies are getting along. Karina's doing well. Yes. Great. Yep. She's thriving. How's the rest of the family taking her? They like. So, just. One, oh, one thing I will also say too to everybody thank you. Thank you so much for the, the kind messages, the text messages, the phone calls, the gifts, the emails. Every, every I, I swear. And then even on Instagram, hundreds of people just saying congratulations, the baby's beautiful. And, and we literally sat there, you have to carve out some time. But you, no, no, it's nice, because you go through the messages and people say some really nice things. Um, so just thank you to everybody on a, on a general note. The support was incredible, because I was on my iPad and my notifications aren't off for no snooze on there, and it was just ding, 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 yeah, ding, ding. Yeah, like, just, just absurd. Um, but we read and responded to every single one of them. Um, thank you very much. But so the family is, I mean, they're on cloud nine. Yeah. Um, you know, this was a big one, big one for my mom. You know, she's been, she's been sober for a year and a half now. Congratulations. Yes, she is. And it's every day. She's been, she's been killing it. Um, but she gets so emotional over the baby because there's so much purpose for her. Um, and then my, my dad got to see the baby. My in-laws are great with the baby. Uh, so it's been it's been a phenomenal it's time. It's wild how know? fired up the grandparents get. Yes. Like so every time I call anyone, they go, oh, "You have news?" And I'm like, <laughs> yeah. "I was just calling to check in. Like I'm fine though, thanks." M Mike and I Everyone. We were talking before the we we started the episode, but Dana called Karina this yeah. morning. First thing Karina was like, "Are you going in? Are you going in? Are you going in?" And Dana was like, "No, I just want to. I want to come over to see the baby." Yeah. And she's like, "Stop, my! You almost popped my staple out because she's got <laughs> she's got the staples in her still." Um, so she said, "Look, you text me from now on. You only call me when you're going in." Yeah. Um, yes, but they're super close. It's been it's been a beautiful thing for for us to for them to have the support. The fun part too, I guess it's fun, but also eerie part is when you see people and they say, "Oh, when's the due date?" And you're like, "Oh, it's July 1st. And they kind of look at you and like smirk because they have a secret. Yep. Like they, they know what it's all about. So like, huh, good luck. Good when luck. I do one of those, you're yes. like, what does that mean? Yes, and, and you know what? A lot of people have And been, it's a friendly way, but it's just funny how people do that. You, you'll see this too, and it happens in our life in general. Like, oh, how long can you sustain this type thing? Yeah. So there's, there was tons of people like, you know, let's see how long no snooze keeps up. Yep. I, I and, and it's great. It's good. Like, you know, it fires us up. I don't know if you up. noticed, but I want to say it publicly. I missed a day. I only got 200. I ran out of time. Oh, just I saw like that, but food, that's okay. Just like the food uh, competition, just ran out of time. I but saw I, that. I did the Dave in my head. I said 80%. Yep. So let me get to bed now so I can do them tomorrow More. so I don't yep. burn out. Because I was going to try to burn the out. The only thing that I would say in my mind when that happens, when you have a setback like that and you can't get something done that you want, the next day, you have to make sure that that doesn't become two days. Yeah, you got to get it done. That's the biggest day. I was thinking about, like, oh, maybe I can do 1,800 the next day. Uh, no. That would just yeah, strategize. That, that, that that's a lot. But, but this, takes whole, forever. Th this whole process, it, it's amazing. But I didn't know how applicable the no-snooze mindset is to fatherhood. Because it's, it, you, don't, you know nothing. You know nothing. And no snooze, I like to compare to a process, right? I, I love that process. So all it is right now is I don't worry about, like I was getting anxious, like, wow, you know, we're not going to get sleep, we're not getting sleep. 
But it's just like change, one day at a time. No, not even one day. Change one the diaper at a time. Change the diaper. Maybe that's our new slogan. One diaper, one at, diaper a time. at a time. Change the diaper. Don't worry about anything no, else. Diapers. Uh, that could be a big thing, Mike. Um, so yeah, I mean that that that's the experience overall. Couldn't have gone gone better. Um, wife couldn't have handled it any better than she's doing now. Um, so I'm just I'm very grateful. And then we have to put in a photo or something at the end, or maybe do a little video with her. Yep. So we could show her to the world. Yes. That was an incredible recap. You did a good job. You, did I? That felt like a boot camp mentally for me, like, like a walkthrough. That, you don't that, like sports where you're about to play the game and they give you like the walkthrough. That's what I felt that's like. That's what it was meant to I do. I kind of wish we had like physical stuff um, set up. My 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 aunt had a recommendation. Okay. That I had to um, solidify what I had posted on Instagram. So here's a chance for me to do it publicly. So my dime of the week will be to read the post that I put up after Callie was born. Okay. All right, so technically this will bring us to Dave's dime of the week. Dimes, dimes, dimes. This also gives you time to think of yours, right? Oh, I got, I got one. I read it. Mine? Oh, it's post. I was like, my, I didn't post anything. I posted about ice cream this week. He posts this like really thoughtful, so, emotional thing, and then I'm like, try this ice cream, it's the best. <laughs> that, that did look so good though. Um, so technically this is a little selfish, right? Because this is strictly no, to this, my daughter. Um, but listen, I'm gonna take I thought my- it was to me, but- I'm, I'm end, gonna take my aunt's recommendation and, and, and do it publicly. So- I think we need to end on this. So this is the finale, bring it home. Mine doesn't, you know. Here we go. Welcome to the world, Callie Michelle Regina. For 39 weeks, we had no idea how we would feel when you arrived. Not sure if I fully understand it, but I've come to the conclusion that all the mistakes I've made as a son, brother, husband, and friend have prepared me to be the best father I can possibly be. Podcast partner as well. Go ahead. I will always guide you, protect you, love you, and challenge you to be anything you want to be in this life. We will also show you what a successful marriage looks like by teaching you the importance of working together to support the one you love every single day, emotionally, mentally, and physically. You have made our bond stronger as a family and you have brought so many of our friends and family members so much joy. I feel so much appreciation and gratitude to those watching over us. God always has you, baby girl. Hashtag Callie's daddy. Until next time, stop snoozing. Get up, have a baby, and get after it. My man. That was nice. I'm going to use the same thing and just insert a living. <laughs> That's another Epi in the books. Go follow us on Instagram and Facebook at No Snooze Podcast. Subscribe to our YouTube channel, No Snooze.